his name together. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, for it is he who has made us and not we ourselves. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, for he allowed us to wake up in our right mind. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, if you are able to clap your hands. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, if you are able to stump your feet. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, if you can shout hallelujah. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, for he is God and God all by himself. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, for he is good. Is he a good God? Is he a good God on today? Well, if he's a good God on today, let's stand to our feet. As the praise goes up, the blessings what? That's what I heard. May God bless you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. On this morning, we came to give the Lord glory and to let his glory rise. Amen. He woke us up this morning. Let's bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. And let the praises of our King rise. Let it rise. Oh, let it rise. Oh, let it rise. Oh, let it rise. Hey, 
Hallelujah. Let the glory of the Lord rise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For he is good. He's good all the time. As you remain standing, our scripture lesson will be coming from Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5, 1 through 17. And we're going to skip down uh, to verses 25, 26, and 27. Ephesians 5, verses 1 through 17. If you have it, say amen. amen. And the word of the Lord reads, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smell and savor. But fornication and all uncleanness and covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this ye know, that no harmonger nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving that, proving what is acceptable unto God, the Lord, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret, but all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doeth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepeth, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Dropping down to 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that it might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Altogether, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. As we remain standing, let us go before the Lord in prayer as we remember those who need deliverance. We remember those who need to be saved. Amen. Let us pray together. Oh, Heavenly Father, we come before you on this evening, Lord God, on this morning lord repentant of every sin father we ask you lord jesus christ to search our hearts and our minds lord god and everything that's within us lord god forgive us father everything that's with lord god that's not like you forgive us father create in us lord god a lord god a heart and a mind lord god that's pleasing unto you father Lord God, not if we've sinned, Lord God, we know we have, Lord God, and we come before you boldly before the throne, Lord God of grace, Lord God, where we can find help, Lord God, in a time of need. Father, we need you, Father, at this time, Father. Lord God, we ask you, Lord God, to cover us in your blood, Father, as we stand before you, Lord God, as brothers and sisters in Christ, Lord God, your children. Father, we pray, Father, Lord God, for this ministry, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, for our pastor and our first lady, asking you, Lord God, to cover them and keep them, Lord God, as they desire to do the will of God, Lord God. We ask you, Lord God, to bless, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord God, bless our mothers, Lord God, our missionaries, Lord God, our deacons, Lord God. Lord God, and all of our brothers and sisters in this ministry, Lord God, Charlotte and Statesville. Father, we pray 
for your hand to be upon us, Lord. Lord God, we know that we can't do anything without you, but we can do all things, Father, through you because you give us the strength to do them, Father. And we say thank you, and we shout hallelujah. Father, we praise you, Lord God, on this morning, Lord God, asking you, Lord God, to strengthen us and fortify us, Lord God. There are, Lord God, there's needs, Lord God, uh, right here among us, Lord God. There's unspoken, Lord God, prayer requests, Lord. And, Lord God, we pray, Lord God, as we touch and agree, Lord God, Lord God, in the spirit, as we touch and agree, Lord God, as brothers and sisters, we ask you to meet every need, Lord God, in this place, Lord God. According to your riches, Lord God, Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you for this opportunity, Lord God, to even come together, Lord God, to praise you and to worship you, Lord. Thank you for giving us a mouth and a mind, Lord God, to praise you and worship you on this day, Lord God. We shout hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We shout hallelujah. Lord God, we appreciate you, Lord. Lord God, we pray, Lord God, for all of our family members, Lord God, who are unsaved, Lord God. We ask you, Lord God, to save and deliver. Touch their minds even right now while we're in service, Lord God. Deliver them, Lord God, from the hands of the enemy. Father, we plead your blood upon them, Father. Lord God, we ask you to encamp your angels round about them, Lord. Yes, as your word says, we were in darkness. Lord God, we ask you, Lord God, to give them, Lord God, the light. Give them mercy, Lord God, on this day, Lord God. Lord God, we know that you have all power in your hands, Lord Jesus. And Lord God, as you, Lord God, reached out and saved us, we ask you to reach out and save them, Lord. Lord God, we may feel, Lord God, that we, Lord God, are tired, but you're never tired, Father. Lord God, we may feel that we want to give up, Lord God, but you will never give up on us, Lord, as you will never give up on our family members, Lord God, who need to be delivered. Lord God, we thank you. We praise you, Lord God. Father, we ask you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, even, Lord God, touch, Lord God, those who are in bereavement. Lord God, we pray, Lord God, for Sister Ina, Lord God, and her family, Lord God, Brent and Kamora, Lord God, in London. We ask you, Lord God, to strengthen them, Father, as only as you can, Lord God. Lord God, comfort them, Father, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Give them joy in the time of sorrow. Father, we thank you. We thank you for keeping them, Father, as only as you can. Father, we pray, Lord God, for all of our family members, Lord God, and all those that's in this ministry, Lord God, and everyone that's connected, Lord God. Lord God, we pray, Lord God, for Brother Norris Wallace, Lord. We pray, Lord God, for Sister Betty, who's in Ethiopia, Father. We pray, Lord God, for Mother Johnson, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, for Mother Red Front, oh, Heavenly Father. We pray, Lord God, for Mother Edie, oh, Heavenly Father. We pray for all of our mothers in this place, Father. For you have given us jewels, Lord God. Lord God, continue to strengthen them, Lord God, and meet every need, Lord God, in their lives, Father. Father, we thank you. We praise you, Father. We thank you for this day, Lord God, that you have given us. And Lord God, we ask you, Lord God, to allow your glory to settle in this place on today. Bless the message and the message of Father. Allow your word to go strong, Lord God, breaking the folly ground, Father. We pray, Lord God, that someone will come into the body of Christ on this morning, Lord. Lord God, save and deliver. Heal the brokenhearted. Father, we thank you. We praise you, Father. Have your way and let your will be done in this place. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen.
Vacation Bible School, whether you uh, showed up in person, amen, or you, uh, you know, you volunteered in whatever capacity you volunteered in, whether you donated towards our VBS outing, which was awesome, the kids had fun, amen, adults too, adults too, amen, whatever way you contributed or you supported Vacation Bible School last week, we want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, amen. Give yourselves a hand, living church, amen, 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 amen. And I just want to put a plug in before Sister Ayana shows our, uh, the recap video for VBS. If you or your student is interested, if you're interested in participating in our, uh, our oratorical competition, or um, or essay competition, or a Bible bowl, or adults, you're not excluded. If you would like to participate in the craft section, um, whether you are doing, you know, you could do um, a so like if you sew or if you crochet or if you do anything like that, and you would like to make something, you're artsy in that way, you can participate as well. So for our uh, convocation this year. If you would like to participate or if your student would like to participate, let me know so that we can register those students, we can register you, and we can get things going for our convocation. And I will tell you, last year, we, well, let me ask, do you know who were the Bible Bowl champions last year? Does anybody know? The Living Church. We were the champions last year, in case you didn't know. We were Bible Bowl champion last year, so if we, if you would like your student to participate in that, please, please let me know. We want to be prepared, and we want to, you know, bring home that title again this year. Amen? Amen? Amen.
happening at the Apply to Build Your Science 2024 conference happening August 29th through the 31st in the vibrant metropolitan area of Charlotte, North Carolina. This year, Minister Debbie Dixon joins forces with Apostle Ronnie and Lady Rubina Parson to bring you a three-day event filled with powerful anointing and practical teachings. We're calling upon all Levites, whether you're a worship leader, musician, singer, dancer, mind, minister, pastor, or a devoted servant in God's tabernacle, this conference is for you. Don't miss out on this extraordinary opportunity. Register now at acl2024.breastfire.com to ensure your spot at this amazing event. We'll see you there. Praise the Lord, saints. I'm coming to you from Kingston, Jamaica, where I am presently overseeing the 74th Convention of the Jamaica Diocese, Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ. Bishop Beverly Hamilton is our presiding bishop. Now, today is the last day of the convocation. The Lord has been moving all week in tremendous ways, and we're so grateful for all that he has done. Now, we miss our living church family and want to send greetings and blessings your way. I trust that VBS went well, as it always does. Much thanks to Sister Toshna and Deacon Morris, and their leadership, and all the teachers and support staff and delegation, for you made it happen. Now on today, may the Lord richly bless you with the word and worship. And I do believe that there is a word from the Lord today. We're going into the month of July. Now, this is usually the time for reunions, vacations, staycations, and yes, convocations. And it all amounts to celebrations for all that the Lord has done and continues to do uh, for our families and our loved ones. So I want to expand on the uh, announcements that you should have already heard and, and should already be circulating on the various Church of Our Lord groups. Um, we are eagerly looking forward to Women's Day on July the 7th, which is the first Sunday in July. And also, uh, we are uh, preparing for the memorial service of the daughter of our beloved Ina Kasaya and the mother of London Broadway and Kimura Broadway, who are a very active part of our youth ministry here. We continue to pray for you, and our heart goes out to you. And we want to say that we thank God for you, and we love you. And now, beyond that, our Regional 5 virtual conference uh, will be from Thursday night, July the 11th, to Saturday, July the 13th. This is a virtual conference. Uh, that means that wherever you are, uh, you can log on and be a part and participate in this conference. Now, uh, the events that have been planned promises to be enriching and inspiring. There will be the Word of God as well as some training that takes place. This is our virtual conference. And at this time, Elder Robert Terry III and his media staff um, have been working eagerly to make sure that we meet our schedule for July the 13th. Then some of us will be traveling to the International Convocation, which will be held in Orlando, Florida, from July the 24th to the July the 28th. And Pastor Parson will be celebrating his 64th birthday on July the 27th. Shout out to all the saints who have birthdays in July. And also, the first Sunday in August, as a church, uh, we're planning to travel to Waysboro, to Parson Grove, for the opening of the annual revival, which I will be opening at 3 o'clock p.m. I hope to see the entire church be there, so please mark your calendars. Pastor Parson want the entire living church to be in attendance uh, 
to this revival opening occasion. Finally, please keep Lady Parson and I in your prayers as we travel back to the States on this week. By the grace of God, we will see you on the first Sunday in July, which will be our annual Women's Day. God bless you. We love you. Peace. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. We love our pastors, don't, don't we? I know I do. I don't know about you. We love our pastor. Amen. We thank God for our pastor. Let us govern ourselves uh, accordingly. And as you saw, um, uh, we, were, we had the, the pleasure to, to be in Jamaica with, with pastor, but we had to come back. You know, uh, all I have to say is... <clears throat> We got to step up our praise. That's all I got. <laughs> That's all I got to say. And you know, we can we can take a cue as well because they came and they when they came for their offering, as you as you saw, they came cheerfully. Amen. That that, that was literally they they actually came with cheerful giving. And with that said, it's offering time in the place. Hallelujah. <laughs> So let us stand and prepare ourselves and let's come cheerfully. I don't, you, you don't have to dance, but just come cheerfully, okay? But if you want to dance, it's okay to dance today, okay? Malachi 3 says, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. Improve me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out such a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Let us stand. Let us be directed in the middle aisle by our ushers. May God bless you. Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks. We give you praise, Lord God. Lord God, bless every hand that has given, Lord God, so that this offering may be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom. Father, we give you thanks. We give you praise. Bless us all so that we may be faithful stewards over all that you entrust us with. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Our God is worthy. Our God is worthy of our praise. We worship him because he's worthy. The word of the prophet Butler came through this morning. He told me that God would give me a special blessing. Oh, I thank God, I thank God, I thank God. Hallelujah. I feel like I've been dipped in some water over my head to overflowing. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I don't even know what I'm supposed to be doing right now. Thank you, Jesus. But I'm caught up. Hallelujah. I'm caught up and I don't want to leave this place. Hallelujah. 
of worship and glory to my God. Hallelujah. For if you know him, hallelujah, then you desire him. If you've been around him, you don't want to be around any other. You prefer him. You prefer him. You choose him. You come after him. Oh, God, I thank you. to your name, Jesus. Glory to your name. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name, Father. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I love you. I praise you, Father, for what you've done, what you're doing, and what you're going to do. Even now, Lord, when we worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord, you come into the place and you walk among your people. Even now, Lord, your spirit is here looking for those who are looking for you. For those who are seeking you, Lord. Oh, God, that you can have an intercession, a time that they can empty out selves, that you can take the place of self and make a new man make a new woman out of them Lord to be shaped in your image Father to be conformed to the image of Christ to walk in it, to live in it to abide in it to refuse all other images but just to be conformed to your image, Lord. We are here that you get the glory. We are here that you get the honor. And we are here for you to get the praise. Oh, with enthusiasm, will you clap your hands and give your Lord the praise that you believe he's worthy to receive? Clap your hands. Oh, clap your hands. Praise him. Worship him. Love on him. Let him love on you. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. It's a good thing to be caught up into the presence of the Lord. It's a good thing just to worship the Lord. That's what we came here for, I do believe. Sometime God, he hijacks a moment. He takes over. And he does, oh God does what he wants to do. Thank you, Jesus. Because he's God, and I don't mind letting him have his way. Thank you, Jesus. <sighs> Glory be to God. Well, I guess we can go ahead and I guess we can preach now. Praise the Lord. You've heard in your hearing Ephesians chapter 5, the reading of 1 through 17, Verses 26, 27. Let the church say amen. That scripture serves as a foundation, a foundational scripture for us who are the people of God. It's a chapter, it's a passage of instructions, encouragement, uh, enlightenment that Paul through the power of the Holy Ghost, wrote down for us to know. If there was something that you'd have to come away from there, you'd have to come away with an understanding that these are instructions for life, not for death, but for life. And that life that you would get from reading these passages is quite simply that life in Jesus Christ to be alive in the Lord. In fact, the opening scripture of that particular passage says, to be ye therefore followers of God. Followers of God. Followers of 
God. And how are you to follow God like like dear children? I saw the teachers leading their students up and down the sidewalk through VBS and it always impresses me to see the children walk in a line behind their teachers and follow their teachers and wherever their teachers lead them they'll go. They sit down in the chairs, listen to the teachers, teach them and instruct them, tell them what they need to learn, participate in the classroom and then when the teachers say it's time to go, they get up, push the chairs under the table, and they follow their teacher back to where their teachers lead them because they put their trust and their confidence in that one who is leading them. I would contend to you then that sometimes I have to stop and check myself. I might be 60 years old, but I'm still God's child. I still need to follow him where he leads me. I still need to go where he said for me to go and do what he said for me to do. Oh, I've wasted so much time in my life. I'm just being honest. Just doing my own thing and having my own way and it called myself enjoying the things of this world. But now the Lord has called me to follow him as a child. And so sometimes when you see me praising God, is because I'm becoming his child. When you see me worshiping and surrendering to him, it's because I want to follow him. I trust where he's leading me. I don't know where, it's, where I'm going. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing with me. Hallelujah. But I know he's doing something, glory to God, because I trust him. I'm standing before you today, not because I chose to be here, I was out clubbing, I was out partying, I was out having a good time, and if my wife will remember that quote, I was shaking everything my daddy and mama told me not to shake on the dance floor, praise God. Oh, but now, hallelujah, I'm 60 years old, and look at me now, hallelujah. Oh, you, you look, I don't look at this suit, just look at the God who's in me. <laughs> Look at his spirit that's in me, keeping me alive. And that devil that had me, he don't have me no more. <laughs> he don't got me no more. He had to take his hands off me because the spirit of my father that's in me was too hot for him to handle. Give God some praise for his spirit. Still tempted? Yes. Still tried? Yes. The things in the world are still out there? Yes, but I choose him. I choose him. I choose him above all of these other things that's going to come my way. Follow God as your children. There is a other scripture I want to actually take my topic from this morning. Matthew chapter 24, verse 44 it goes in line with that scripture. It helps to us to understand the depths, the, the, the way that we can follow Matthew 24 and 44. Praise the Lord. Jesus is talking to his disciples, and he's giving them the word. He's giving, letting them know about a lot of things, and there's a lot of people around the Lord as he's giving this wonderful Olivet Discourse, and he is talking to them about one thing after another, the end times. If you want to study end times and eschatology, end times, that's what that big word means. Praise the Lord. You get in there and you read the words of Jesus in Matthew 24, 25, and see what he's talking about all the way to the end of chapter 25, and you'll find out what the Lord is, wants us to know about. But there's a key scripture for me in that particular passage in Matthew 24. Verse 44, Jesus says to his disciples, after he's taught them, after he's given them parables, after he's given them examples, after he's told them about the end times, he tells them something that therefore, verse 44, be ye also ready, for in such an hour 
as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. I like to use for a topic, being ready for presentation. Being ready for presentation. I, um, I was dating my wife, and I was just so amazed on our first date when she was sitting across from me, praise the Lord, and I saw her sitting at that table, and I was like, wow, I got this good-looking, fine woman sitting over here, and I was feeding her, and I was sitting there grinning from ear to ear, and I couldn't believe that she is sitting there with me. My gosh, she looks so good that I could just snatch her up right then on the place. <laughs> but we was in Applebee's and I had to behave, praise the Lord. I want you to look at your neighbor and I want you to tell your neighbor, neighbor, you look so good, you can be snatched up. Give God some praise. Hallelujah. You look so good, you can be snatched up. The Bible teaches us to be ready in different ways and in different things. The Bible talks about for the preacher, the proclaimer of the word, the evangelist even, those of us who are saved, filled with the spirit of God, who are witnesses for Christ, that's all of us who are Holy Ghost filled, to be ready in season and out of season to proclaim the word of God. The Bible tells us also to be ready, to be ready to give an answer to every man who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you. And Jesus in this passage said, well, I want you to also be ready for in such an hour as you think not the Son of Man cometh. We are saints of God and we're filled with the Spirit of God and we have the power of God living inside of us and our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Let me tell you something. I don't know if you've ever looked up this statistic, but there's 166,000 people who leave this earth who die every day. Imagine that. 166,000 people dying every day. Jesus said, many are called, few are chosen. So if many are going to die every day and many of them are not going to heaven that's a whole lot of people every day a matter of fact it's about 6,900 people every hour that are leaving this world saints let me tell you something we are God's people we are the light in this world are you telling somebody about Jesus are you telling somebody about Jesus I'm I'm going to talk more about it later but it's a matter of life and death. Let me tell you, these folks won't have a second chance. They won't have another opportunity. Are you telling somebody about Jesus? We got to live ready, saints. We got to live right. And we got to do what the Lord says. We got to be holy people, holy vessels who live a holy life by a holy word and who serve a holy God and live a life that our standard is holiness. That means that we got to live ready. We got to be ready. We got to walk that straight and narrow way, not the broad way where other people like to walk on. We got to not give in to the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. Why? Because the Bible says we shouldn't. Jesus rejected all that stuff when Satan appeared to him in the wilderness when he was being tempted 40 days and 40 nights. The devil said, I'll give you all of these things in this world. I'll give you all of the riches in this world. I'll give you the Taj Mahal. I'll give you the Colosseum. I'll give you the beautiful places in the Amazon. I'll give you all the money more than Bill Gates and more than Jeff Bezos and more than all of these folks got. I'll give you all of these things in this world with the greatest military might and the greatest amount of this, that, and the other. I'll give it to you if you will fall down and worship me. Isn't it interesting that the devil never said to Jesus he would give him souls he said he would give him things. He would give him stuff. What are you pursuing after saints? I'm going to challenge you today. What are you going after? Are you going after stuff? Are you trying to build your place on this earth so you can stay here forever? You're not designed. You're not called to stay here forever. You should be preparing for your home and glory. That's what we are to be working hardest for. 
Hallelujah. I love it when I heard the testimony of this young lady. She caught my eye in the blue sitting over there. Praise the Lord. The next best singer to Shirley Caesar. That's right. She know who I'm talking about. When it was an opportunity for her to go and uh, I think make a pledge or something like that. But this young lady said there's a, uh, I don't know, prayer meeting, Bible class. It was something going on that night. I didn't hear the full story. You know the story. You can tell it better than I can. But she chose Jesus. She chose Jesus. And you say, well, she missed out on an opportunity in this world. She said, I'm going to live for God. And I know that he will provide all of my needs according to his riches in glory. And because you chose Jesus, he will never, ever let you down. Hallelujah. No, never. No, never. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus resisted all that stuff. So we can be like the first Adam. We can give in to things that we see, the gimme, gimme idea, the I decide what's best for me because I'm big and bad enough to make these decisions, even though we know we shouldn't, even though we risk losing our connection with God. But unfortunately, some people select these things. Some people have sold out to the world. They used to live for God, but they went back into the world. Their love has grown cold, and some of them will be left behind because there is going to be a time when Jesus will come and take his people out of this world. He said, be ye also ready. You got to be prepared so that when the Lord comes to snatch his church out of this world, you can be snatched up with us. You don't want to be left behind. Two will be in the fields. One will be taken and the other left. Two will be in the mills grinding. One will be taken and the other left. Two will be in the bed. One will be taken and the other left we can follow the advice rather we should follow the advice of the second Adam when he said be also ready let me tell you something saints this message I'm giving to you it might not have you shouting and running in the aisles but I want you to go away strengthen I want your hand your loins to be girt about even tighter I want your armor on I want you to go forth and be ready to be a light for Christ in this dark and dying world but let me tell you even so feel with the spirit of God is still my choice. I get to decide how I want to live. God will let me decide. I'm a preacher and I'm preaching the gospel right now, but I can walk right out this door and decide I'm going to live like I want to live and I'm going to do what I want to do. Yes, I can put my hands on those things the Lord said. Don't put your hand on two. I can go and try to mingle light with darkness. I can go and hang out in the clubs and hang out on the corner and hang out with the people. I can say I'm going to eat from the devil's table and I'm going to eat from God's table. I'm going to drink from God's cup and I'm going to drink from the devil's cup. I can be lukewarm. I don't have to have the spirit in me moving anymore. I can quench the spirit. I can grieve the spirit. I can do all of these things. Why? Because I'm choosing to be like, you know, some people like they want to be like, uh, look like Holly Berry. They want to look like uh, and be like uh, Beyonce. They want to they wanna be the Kim Kardashian of their neighborhood. They want to be the, uh, the, the, what's the wives of the, the, the Dubai wives of uh, what them places, you know? Yeah, all them places they be calling the wives. I don't know what in the world, heist wives or whatever those people are. They want to be like Chris Brown, want to be like Jay-Z, want to have all their money, want to have all their things. You can choose these things. God will let you. You can be so comfortable with these things that you no longer hear the voice of the Spirit of God. You can be so far away from God that you feel no conviction anymore because the things you've done it so long, you've given into it so long, you've walked that way so long, you've gotten used to it. You say, oh, it don't bother me no more. Yeah, that don't bother me when I hear a bunch of junk. It don't bother me when I hear a bunch of cursing it don't bother me when I what I watch on TV. It don't bother me what I say to my friends or what my friends are saying to me. Oh, we just laughing and having a good time. And the flesh is alive. The old man lives. We walk out of the flesh after a while, lust and jealousy and envy and all of these things begin to creep up in our lives. Then we uh, don't don't mind fornication. We don't mind profanity. We don't mind lying. We don't mind gambling. We don't mind stealing. We don't mind doing a lot of things. Because we chose this world 
And we grieve the Holy Spirit of God. And we let him down because we quench his spirit. We get in the church, praise the Lord. And the spirit of God is moving. And God is knocking on your door. And the word of God is going forth. But uh, you've got something else you want to do right now. Oh, well, Lord, let me see the cell phone. Pastor talks about this. And we say, this, uh, I got a text from somebody. Oh, I got an email. I've been waiting on that email. Oh, well, you know what? That's a funny video right there in the house of God. We ought to be, we know what we ought to do. We know who we ought to call on. We know that we got to turn away from some of these things because you don't want these things to have you. You don't want them to have a grip on your life that they squeeze out the spirit in the life of Christ in you and you look like the world instead of looking like Jesus. I don't want to be left behind. So if I find out that I'm in this position, then there's still hope for me. I'm not dead. I'm still alive on this earth. I have to remember to be like David in Psalm 51 when David found himself so far away from God. And you know the story. I think you know the story. David, yes, yeah, 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 amen, praise the Lord, and got to messing around with Bathsheba when he didn't have no uh, business even looking at the woman, much less putting his hands on that woman, praise the Lord, and amen, got that woman pregnant. And you know what happened. Oh, Lord, he had the woman's husband killed and then took the woman into his wife like God was going to say, that's all right. But, oh, but David, when he realized that I've lost the spirit of God, when he realized that the spirit was dead, dead in my presence, I don't feel him like I used to feel him. I'm not shouting like I used to shout. I'm not moving, thank you, sir, like I used to move. When the spirit is moving in the house, David didn't feel the spirit no more. He wasn't crying out like he used to cry out. Why? Because he had got touched the sin, put his hand on the accursed thing. But David said, you know what? I remember how how the Lord used to do in my soul. I remember that day when he filled me up with the gift of the Holy Ghost. I remember that cooling water that flooded my soul and washed away all of my sins. I remember when I was in my bed in the middle of the night and God would speak to my heart and he would give me his songs in the middle of the night and he give me a word on which way I should go and what thing I should do. I remember the Lord when I would walk around during the day with my king robes on and the Lord would speak to my heart. He touched me. He blessed my soul. I remember being on my throne and the spirit of God would move me and shake me and people would wonder what's wrong with me. David said, I remember those days and I want to have those days all over again. So Lord, create in me a clean heart, oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me. Restore unto me, Jesus. Restore unto me, Jesus. The joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways. And sinners shall be converted unto thee. David would say, I want to, Lord, I want to preach your word. I want to teach your word. I want to feel you all over again. I want to win souls for you. Because I realize, as the word of God says in Isaiah, that sin separates between us and God. You hear me, saints? I don't care how long you've been saved, how long you've been preaching, how deep your prayers, but if you're walking in intentional and willful sin, Isaiah 59, 1 and 2, look it up. It says that sin separates between you and God. And he doesn't hear you anymore. You're out there on your own by yourself walking around and the devil is loving it and he's calling your name and he's drawing you farther and farther away from the safety of Jesus Christ. All because of sin. All because I decided to give in. But let me tell you something. Saints, we got to make our decision. We got to make up our mind. Because we don't want to be left behind. We want to live ready. 
We that are dead to sin can no longer live in sin. We got to repent. We got to turn away from it because if we lose our oh God and we drift away from him and his voice is no longer enough to draw us to him. We don't hear his voice no more. We don't feel him moving no more. He's not speaking to us in our night dreams or in our daytime. We don't know where he is. Some say God is silent. He's not silent. Oh, you ever had a father? Stop talking to his children whom he loves dearly. He always wants to talk to his children whom he loves dearly. I love my children. I love my grandchildren. And I love to sit and talk and play with them. Your heavenly father wants to play with you and be with you and talk with you and hang out with you even more so. So his voice is not silent. He wants to work his work in you. So I'm living now so that I can hear him say, well done, Good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of the Lord. You say, well, brother, how, how do we know how to be ready? Well, it's in the word of God for us to know how to be ready. Jesus in the parables in Matthew chapter 24 when he was going through and talking to them and that. And then he went over to chapter 25 and he gave them an example of how to be ready. He said uh, there were uh, ten virgins, praise the Lord, invited to uh, a wedding. Amen. And uh, they had to come to the wedding and they knew that it would take some time before they were going in to the wedding. There were five of them who were very wise and said well this might run over into the night and I'll need some light to see my way around. So they brought some extra oil in their lamps with them so that they can be ready just in case this thing lingered longer than what they thought. Praise the Lord. But there were five who decided oh boy we're going to have a party. We're going to have a good time. I ain't worried about all that. Just let me in the door. That's all I want to do. Just let me in. Let me in. They got in then praise the Lord went to sleep and night came and then the bridegroom made the call those five foolish virgins say wait a minute it's dark out here I can't see my way those who are wise say well we've got extra oil we're going to pour the oil in our lamps and we're going to light our lamps and we're going to see where we need to go but the five foolish said well you know what give us some of your oil so that we can see the way too but they say no 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 I can't give you my oil. You got to go out and find you some oil. Those women went out in the middle of the night walking around, stumbling around, found a place to buy some oil. But those who were ready, praise the Lord our God, when the door was open, hallelujah, when the opportunity came, they went in to the place where the wedding was. They went in with the bridegroom and the bridegroom closed the door. Thank God. God, those foolish women came behind them and knocked on the door a little while later and they were standing out in the darkness. They had some oil in the lamp now but it was too late because the man looked out the door and said who are you? They said well we're one of the virgins. We were invited to this place. We had an invitation. Matter of fact we've been in your place. You know our names. And what will the Lord say? I don't know you. You're in church, sing on the choir, preaching. Ah, oh, glory. Oh, Jesus. Preaching the gospel. And the Lord does not know your name. If he's not speaking to you, if he's not dwelling with you, if he's not walking in you, if you're not living for him every day, every hour, every minute, every second. And you better be careful. You need to check yourself. Don't wait till it's too late. Get it right now. Get the oil in your lamp. Get the oil that you need. How do you get your oil? I can tell you the best way to get you some oil is down on your knees. Hallelujah. Crying out to a holy God. Hallelujah. And asking the Lord, Lord, revive me again. Lord, fill me again. Lord, change my heart. Change me back to what you want me to be. Because I got to be ready. I'm not playing with this thing, Lord. I want to be ready, Jesus. Do what needs to be done in me. And if something needs to be taken away from me, take it away from me. That's how you be ready. 
Jesus went on and he gave another parable. He said, there's another way you can be ready. There were those that had, a, I gave them some talents and I gave them some abilities. I gave one five and I gave one two and I gave one person one talent. Praise the Lord. And I said to work with this talent until I come back. One of them went and took that talent, hid it in a hole and said, I'll just hold on to that till you get back. I'm not doing nothing else. I'm not working. I'm not laboring. I'm not going to put forth no effort. I'm just coming to church and I'm going home and that's all I'm going to do. Lord, hallelujah. But there are those, praise the Lord, and I pray that that's the majority of the saints in here. Matter of fact, if you're a Holy Ghost field, I pray that you are using the talent and the gifts and the abilities that God has given you when the opportunity comes for you to pray or to sing or to pray or to proclaim the truth of God or whatever God is calling you to do, you do it with all your your heart. You do it with all your might and you do it with all your soul. You got to labor. You got to work for the Lord. You cannot be on the sidelines. You can't be sitting idly by and watching everyone else work. And you cannot hide it in the ground. You've got to be working and you've got to be a profitable sermon. And so if you're not working, what did the Lord call those? The Lord talked to this, his servants when he came back, amen, and found out that those that had five talents, they went and worked and they doubled the, the amount of abilities and money and the things that they had done for the Lord. They became a profitable servant. And the Lord said, well done, you've done good. Be thou, you've been good over five. I'm going to make you rule over five more. And he did the same for the one that had two talents. But that one that had one talent. I guess he thought that he was serving God by doing nothing. Saints, don't fool yourself. You cannot serve God by doing nothing. You must always find yourself being a profitable servant because why? if you are unprofitable in the kingdom of God, this is what the Bible says. This is not my Bible. This is the word of the Lord, and it's in your Bible too. He said if you are an unprofitable servant, you will be thrown in outer darkness or hell. The servant that did not serve his Lord as he knew he should be. Saints, don't be on the sidelines. Don't be watching everybody else shout. Don't be watching everybody else pray. Don't be watching everybody else be a witness. Don't be watching everybody else teach Sunday school. You put your hands to the plow. You be a profitable servant. I believe that unfortunately so many people are going to be left behind. They're not going to be ready because they are not profiting the servant, the kingdom of God like he wants them to. I'm telling you this today so that you can check yourself, that you can be laboring in the vineyard, that you can be occupying till he comes. Why am I telling you this? Because I believe when the Lord gave it to us, he really meant it. It's a matter of life and it's a matter of death. Being ready also is to do the will of Jesus. Jesus gave a list of things for those who did this. He said that these were the ones that would be the, who would be approved by him. He said that those who feed the hungry as much as you've done it to the least of them, so have you done it to me. He said if you give water to the thirsty, if you've done it to the least of them, you've done it to me. If you take in a stranger, if you've done it to the least of them, you've done it to me. If you clothe the naked, if you've done it to the least to them, you've done it to me. If you visited the sick, if you've done it to the least of them, you've done it to me. If you went to those in prison, if you've done it to the least of them, you've done it to me. If you've given us somebody a cup of cold water in the name of Jesus, you will not lose your reward. Look back over your life and say, Lord, am I profitable or am I unprofitable? I want to be ready when you come. I don't want to be an unprofitable servant who the Lord said will go his way into everlasting punishment but only the righteous into life eternal. I say to you again, be ye also ready for that day. You don't know when it will come. You don't know when the Lord will come and take his church out of here. You don't know when that last day will come. You want to be caught up. 
And as I said about my wife, I was so happy when I snatched her up out of the, the available pool of women in the world, praise the Lord, my God, and, oh, and in the church, amen. She was no longer in the available pool. Hers was closed, no longer open, amen, and all that and the other. Praise the Lord. Well, you want to be closed when it comes to God. You don't want to be open to all of these things in the world. These are, th there's some things, let me tell you, I preached about some things I do know because it's in the word of God, but there are some things I don't know. That I don't know the year Jesus will be sent by God to bring his children home. I just don't know. I don't know the month, the day, the, the time he will return. Uh, praise the Lord. I don't know when the last witness of God will be saved. I don't know when the gospel will be finally preached in all the world and that last person will hear the gospel. I don't know when there will be no more work for the saints to do on earth, when the, there will be no more witnessing that can be done, no more evangelizing that can be done by the church, no more preaching by the church, no more outreaches by the church, no more praying and intercession by the church for the church will have completed his work on earth. I don't know when the Lord will say, when God will tell Jesus, go get my people. I don't know when, but when it happens, it will happen in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. I won't have time to get right. I won't have time to preach to you this sermon. I won't have time to encourage your souls. I won't have time to tell you again to be ready. You have to be ready in that moment. You have to be ready and right in that moment. In fact, I don't even know when the Lord was going to tell me, Barry, your time on the earth is over. But I want to work and I want to occupy till he comes. As I said, 160-something thousand people every day are dying every day. And unfortunately, all of them ain't going to heaven. Praise the Lord. But I do know that the Lord told us to be ready because there's going to be a come a time when we are going to have this body redeemed. It's going to be brought up from this earth, and we are going to be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. And this mortal body will be changed into an incorruptible body. Praise the Lord. And we will be with the Lord forever and forever evermore. Why am I preaching like this? And why? Why am I living like this? Because hell is not an option for me. I've got no business in hell. Praise the Lord. I've got no reservation in hell. Praise the Lord. And I don't live like I want to go to hell. The devil and his angels, that's who was made for hell. Let them be in hell. Not me. Not you. Not you. Not my brothers. Not my sisters. Not my sons. Not my daughters. Not my family. Not the saints. Not any of you belong in hell. But because, unfortunately, men love sin and they refused Jesus, they died and left this world without the only one who's able to keep them from falling into hell. In hell, they'll be tormented by fire that does not go out. Oh my, in hell there'll be maggots and worms that will, you know, worms and maggots, when they get on dying, decaying flesh, they just eat and eat and eat. Those worms in hell will eat a soul that will never, ever die. Extreme temperatures. You think it's hot out here when it's 90 something degrees? Hell is so much hotter than that. You know when it's hot on this earth I can go inside the house. I can turn on the air conditioner. There won't be no air conditioner in hell. I can go get some water. There won't be no water in hell. I can go get some food. There won't be no food in hell. I can lay down on my bed and rest. There won't be no place of rest in hell. There'll be no light of day, no mercy, no rest, no nothing that's good that we enjoy on this earth. There will be none of that in hell. Most of all, there will be no intercessor. There will be no Jesus to save you in hell. Do you hear me, saints? This is not just for us, but it's for those who are around us, who we work with, who we live with, who we go to the gym with, wherever we're going. We got to be that witness. We got to be that light. It's a matter of life and death. 166,000 people died yesterday. I wonder how many of them realize it's too late. It's too late. And I have a question for the saints. How many of us have been around somebody they died and gone to hell. And they didn't even know that we were saved. They didn't know Jesus. They didn't know that we were God's people because we kept our lights closed up. We wanted to be a part of the crew. We wanted to be a part of the crowd. We wanted to be like the others. We didn't want to be a peculiar person. 
We didn't want to act like a chosen generation, a holy priesthood, a royal nation. We didn't want to act like those holy folks. We didn't want nobody to know that we quote scriptures and that we shout in church that we stand up and clap our hands and we openly praise God and then we get on our face before the Lord we didn't want them folks to know that so we close that off to them and when they die we go to their families and we shake their hand and we say we are so sorry that my good friend died we sorry for your loss what did you do for them while they were on the earth did you tell them about Jesus? Did you let your light shine? Were you too busy with your own stuff that you couldn't get into God's stuff? You let this world overwhelm you, the cares of this life consume you, choke out the Jesus in you? Or are you bold enough, hallelujah, to let the Holy Ghost have his way? Are you bold enough to stand up and say, I live for Jesus. I am his servant. And let me tell you how you can be saved, hallelujah. Are you bold enough to be that one to will get, divert somebody from that road to hell? Are you bold enough? Because God said, I love every soul. Every soul is mine. But the devil is battling and trying to get all those souls into hell. Being, no, going to hell is not an option for me, but also as I close, being left behind is not an option for me. I think that, praise the Lord, uh, amen. Babe, do I look good this morning? Do I look good enough to be snatched up? Oh, I praise the Lord. Thank you, babe. And even so, Lord Jesus, do I look good to you this morning? Do I look good enough to be snatched up? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Amen. I want to live for you. I want to be where you are when I leave this world. Because being left behind is not an option for me. I don't want to be here to have to go through the greatest and the worst, most difficult tribulation ever on this earth. That's what Jesus said it would be. You know, in the history of the world, there have been some cruel people doing doing some cruel things. You talk about Rome and the, all that the saints had to go through in Rome. Peter, poor Peter, he said, don't crucify me. When you crucify me, don't crucify me right side up. Crucify me upside down because I don't deserve to be crucified like my Lord. Nero would go out and get Christians because he wanted to play with them. He toyed with them and he made them, he took them and put them on posts in his garden at night and he would put some pitch or tar on them, something flammable, and he would light them up just so they would be light in the middle of his garden. I'm talking about some cruel folks, folks. They would throw the Christians into the Colosseum and, and put uh, skins of animals on them and then they would let the lions and ravage the vicious beasts loose on these Christians so they would tear them apart. They thought this was good entertainment. These were some cruel people. You know, Paul, he talked about the suffering of saints throughout the ages. In Hebrews chapter 11, he said they were made fun of and ridiculed. Their backs were cut open with whips. They were chained in prisons. They died by stoning. They were sawed in half. They were killed with the sword. They were poor and oppressed, wandering around in deserts and mountains, hiding in caves and holes in the ground. You think that sound bad? Wait till the time after the rapture has occurred, it will be far worse under the Antichrist for those who try to be Christians than there ever will be. These will look like good times compared to what you will have to go through if you are left behind. Don't be left behind. Live to be ready, saints. Live to be ready every day. Every day. Don't take a day off. Don't take an hour off. Don't give in to the enemy. Fight him, fight him, fight him, fight him. Just so you can be ready. Somebody give God a praise in his house. Stand on your feet if you would as we get ready to be dismissed. I hope this is weighed in your hearts and has touched your heartstrings. Because one thing I've understood, no matter how much money I got in the bank, that doesn't approve me before God. No matter how much knowledge I have in science and physics, doesn't approve me before God. I can tell you all about Protestantism or Catholicism. That doesn't approve me before God. I can debate oneness Pentecostalism or Trinitarian doctrine. I can debate these things, but these things don't make God smile. 
I can walk you through systematic theology and dispensationalism and tell you what the difference is between the two, but they will not get me into heaven. My degree in deuterocanonical studies, my year-long studies in Josephus and Eusebius and all the church history, I can know all of these things, but they will not say to me, but just for that, that God says, well done. Nor will my ability to quote a hundred scriptures get me into the kingdom. Jesus told his disciples, here's the key. You can cast out demons. You can preach my gospel. You can sing songs. You can do all these things in the church. But if your name is not written in the Lamb's book of life, you won't get in. We are all invited today. We're all invited into a close walk with God to walk with Jesus every day and to be faithful unto the calling that he's put on your life. I contend you want to be faithful. I contend you want to be true. I contend you want to be real. Most of all, you want to be ready. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. God, we honor you. Lord, we love you. And we give your name the praise. All honor and all glory and majesty, dominion, and power belong to you. Father, we, you, we have declared your word this morning. And I believe we want to be ready. So, Father, in every heart, in every soul that's in here this morning, saved or unsaved, Father, whether they have fallen back or whether they've grown cold, whether they've let some things into their lives that shouldn't be there. Father, oh God, we repent. We bow our head before you and we repent. We turn away from them to turn to you, Jesus. But not only must we be ready, but we must be that witness you've called us to be. Help us to be that, Lord. Help us to do that that you would get the glory in our lives. For we are your people, Father, and we are your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Give God some praise in his house as we get ready to end our service. At this time, I'll ask Elder Wallace to come forward, and he will take us further in our altar call. Praise the Lord. Jesus is calling your name. He's requiring of you to do his work. I'll be honest with you, and I hope you will be honest with yourself. That if I've stumbled along the way, if I've fallen from where I should be standing, if I've not been faithful, if I've let something in my life that should not be, then God is calling you today. He wants you to be ready. He wants you to be ready. For that day will come. No man knows the day. No man knows the hour. But the Lord will come. Saints, we got to be ready. Saints, we got to be ready. If you're not saved, we will pray with you this morning. We will intercede for you this morning. We will tarry with you this morning. We will baptize you in the name of Jesus this morning. We are not going to let you go until you are ready to let go. We're going to ask God to fill your soul with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' mighty name. I rebuke every demon, every devil from hell that would hinder you this morning so that you can come freely, come freely, come freely. It's without cost, it's without charge. Come freely so that you can be made ready. You can be made ready for an hour as you think not the Son of Man coming. So that you can be ready. In Jesus' name.
praise the Lord. If you are sick in your body and you want to be healed, I'm asking you to come up this morning. I want to pray for you. If you need healing in your physical body or if you need healing in your mind, any kind of healing you need, I want to pray for you this morning before you leave. In Jesus' name.
God bless you in here. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. The anointing of God is indeed in this place. And as you can, if you stand to your feet, let us prepare to be dismissed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. If there's anybody that is in here today, praise the Lord, and you wanted to come up and you wanted prayer, the anointed is in this place. Amen. You can still free to come up in Jesus' name, even as we dismissed. If you would still desire to come up, amen, praise the Lord. I will be up here along with Elder Butler, amen, to pray for any souls. Praise the Lord. Let us keep in mind, amen, this upcoming week, uh, Bible class, amen, prayer, 6 to 7, Bible class, 7 to 8 in Jesus' name. Let us remember and govern ourselves accordingly, amen, next Sunday, Women's Day in Jesus' name. Come on and give God a praise for the word of the Lord. Come on and give God a praise. The word has been preached. We thank God for the message in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. If there's anybody that is here that would like to make this church your home and fall under the leadership and tutelage of our pastor, amen, you can come up in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to ask Elder Butler if he can come up now and give benediction in Jesus' name in any final words. Let everyone shout hallelujah. 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 Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his presence with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Lord and Savior, in Jesus' name, amen. amen.